What's up guys and welcome back to another G37 video. So this is going to be the third video that I've done on the G37 and in last week's video we ended up installing some coilovers on the G37 and at the end of the video I also told you guys that I was going to focus on maintenance and make sure this G37 was running perfectly fine. So given that this was owned by a 19 year old I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that he didn't do maintenance wise so all the fluids I will be changing or at least most of them. I do have a bunch of stuff that I'm going to be showing you guys right now a bunch of fluids that I'll be changing and I'll show you guys what I'll be doing but it doesn't feel right driving this car without doing proper maintenance at least changing the fluids and making sure that everything's good to go on the G37 another thing I realized in last week's video was that the tie rods were essentially toast they had so much play and it felt really sketchy to be driving on them but we will be changing them in this video so we'll be replacing a couple components that need to be replaced already we'll be doing some maintenance as well and that should take care of the G37 maintenance wise at least for right now funny enough I was actually gonna do a video on the G35 unfortunately if you guys are familiar with the channel, you guys would know I installed an oil cooler on the G35 for the track day. I finally struck luck and the oil cooler essentially started pissing out fluid and I actually had the oil pressure light turn on. So I won't be running any oil cooler, but I also don't really need it since I don't daily drive it or really drive the G35 that much anymore. So let me show you guys everything I have for the G37, starting off with basic of most basic air filters, cabin filter, really basic stuff that you should be doing to any car regardless. And like I said, I had the tie rods with so much play, so I got the inner and outer tie rods. Then I got this little tool to go ahead and take out the inner tie rod. Along with that, I'm gonna be doing an oil change. Got six quarts, since it says it's like 5.2 with the filter. So that takes care of the oil change. And then we go to the transmission. So I got a transfer pump. I got two actually, one for the diff fluid and then one for the transmission fluid. We got the transmission fluid we're gonna be doing a transmission fluid and filter change and again we just have here this gear oil from Lucas that's gonna be going into the differential so we do have work cut out for us this will take a bit to do especially to make sure everything's done right but I'm really excited to be doing all this on the G37 it really needs it make sure everything is up to date if you're noticing there are a couple things that I should have here but let me explain what I'm missing I did not do the brake fluid because I already did the brake fluid for this car Funny enough, when I was test driving the G37, it had zero brakes. It had no brakes at all. It was really sketchy to drive. You had to essentially just put your foot down all the way down on the floor to get this G37 to stop. So that was like the first thing that I did to this car to be able to just drive it normally because it was really sketchy. So brake fluid is done. Ended up using some DOT4 fluid and everything's good on that part. And you may be asking, why am I not doing the power steering fluid? Well, we actually have a whole power steering leak in the system. It's not really worth doing a power steering flush. I will be tackling that some other time, but it's not really a deal breaker. Coolant I actually could have done, but I will be doing this another time because I do plan on tackling the galley gaskets sooner or later. So it shouldn't be too long till I tackle the galley gaskets. I just didn't want to deal with putting new coolant and then draining it all out again. I will tackle that later on once I do the galley gaskets. So those are the reasons that I have for the certain fluids that I didn't do. Everything will be taken care of eventually. It's just one of those things where I also just didn't want to do everything all at once crazy enough this became my daily without even trying so I want to not tear into it too much until I get my G35 running normal and then I also get the Honda working since that one's my daily really Alright guys, so first thing we're going to be installing on the G37 are these air filters. Being that this is a VHR, it does have one on each side. So there is one air box on each side for the VHRs. So with that, it's really simple to replace. Just got to unlatch the uh, latches on the stock air box. You see your old filter, remove it, put your uh, new one on and put it back on. Snap it into place and you're all good to go. So again, really, really simple, easy, and literally looks like it was the exact same filter. So these definitely need to be replaced. They look pretty old. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace this one as well. So again, I really love that the G37 has it so easy to install an air filter. You could do it in literally two seconds. Um, so 
There you go. We now have installed two air filters on the G37. We're gonna hop on under the car and we're gonna go ahead and do the tie rods. All right guys, so now that we're going down to the G37, we're gonna be taking off this nut that holds on the tie rod. We are replacing the outer and the inner tie rod, so it's gonna be fairly simple to do, nothing too crazy. So this is a 17 millimeter nut. So let's go ahead and take off this nut and then we'll go ahead and go from there. All right guys, so we took out the outer tie rod and I needed to go to the store to actually get this puller. This is specifically for tie rods, so it's a tie rod puller. I was hammering it and it wasn't coming off loose, so I ended up having to go to the store and actually get the tool. So we're gonna go ahead and tackle the inner tie rod. So let's go ahead and do that. All right guys, so here we have the new outer tie rod and then here we have the old outer tie rod. As you can see, this thing was literally about to blow out. Honestly, I was kind of sketched out driving on this. I felt like at any point, this thing was just gonna give out. But thankfully, we already have the inner tie rod installed. It's really straightforward. Ended up taking off the old one. You can use a wrench or you can use a tool like that. So the brand I went with for inner and outer tie rods is Moog. I use them in my G35 and they come with this little fitting so you can put grease on them. So they are serviceable, which is really nice. Um, so periodically, you just want to put some grease and have the old grease come out. And then you have some fresh grease inside. So it'll make it last a lot longer if you take care of it. Thankfully, getting rid of the old ones and able to put in a brand new one so there won't be any problems at all. So now that we got the tie rods taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and go into our next job. I kinda wanna take care of the transmission fluid first before I go into anything else, just because oil change is a little quicker, so I can leave that last. Also, the diff fluid is pretty easy, so. Let's go ahead and go under the car, take out the drain and fill bolts, and we'll start from there. So we're under the car now, and we're gonna go ahead and drain the fluid first before we take off the pan. Since this is a 2008, it is a weird year where none of the other videos on YouTube will explain it this way. All the other videos for the other G37s will be for the 7 speed and since I have the 5 speed and the 2008 is the only one for the 5 speed, it doesn't have a fill bolt so we're gonna go ahead and just drain it. You're gonna fill it from up top where the dipstick is. You could just use a funnel or you can use a transfer pump if you want to. So we have a 19 millimeter right here. We're gonna drain the fluid first and then from there we'll start taking off the bolts from the pan and then we'll drop the pan as well. guys so we ended up taking off the pan and here is the old transmission filter side by side we have the new one and the old one you can see that the old one has a little bit of metal shavings on it I honestly thought there was gonna be more just based off the you know the ownership that it's had to take off the transmission filter is just literally a bunch of 10 millimeters all around there are different sizings on bolts you want to make sure you pay attention to where they come from another thing you want to do is make sure you take out these magnets that are on the pan um, they are removable and they do capture metal flakes so that they don't go back into your transmission or float around in the fluid so you can take these out you can clean them and then you can put them back on so that's what I'm gonna be doing I'm gonna clean them out and make sure that the pan is clean doesn't have any metal shavings at all and then we'll put everything back together now that we have all the bolts installed on the transmission filter we can go ahead and bolt up the pan I installed the transmission pan and I ended up using a new crush washer and then for the tightening sequence it's similar to how you tighten a wheel when you're putting it back on so you want to start on this side hop on that side come back this side so everything's installed now everything's good to go so we're gonna go ahead and put some fluid in this and then we'll go on to the next job all right guys so we're in the rear the G37 and here we have a rear differential. This is the assembly for the four wheel steering so it connects onto the spring buckets and then the spring buckets are moved depending on the steering wheel in the front. So my car has this but not every car will so don't worry if you see this. We're gonna go ahead and crack open the bolt right here and then we'll be able to see if it cracks open we can drain this.
All right guys, so we ended up taking care of the differential fluid. Now we have the last fluid that we're gonna change in this video, and that's gonna be the oil. So we're gonna drain the oil. We're also gonna change the filter on the G37, and we'll have this car taken care of fluid-wise, at least on the things that I'll be doing for now. And then after that, we'll go into the car and we'll do the cabin filter, and I'll show you guys where the cabin filter is located and how to access it. Alright guys, so with all the fluids taken care of, the last thing we're going to be doing on the G37 is installing this cabin filter. We're going to be installing this because surprisingly the AC works really well. In order for me to use the AC and not feel kind of grossed out, I want to go ahead and install this cabin filter. So we're going to go ahead and install this, so let me show you guys what it got to do. In order to be able to install the cabin air filter, we first have to remove the glove box. There's just a couple Phillips screws all around they have to remove. I believe it's like six. Also to make your life a little bit easier, just go ahead and pull this off off little plastic piece on the side and then it should make it a lot easier for you to move around and be able to access all the bolts so let me go ahead and remove the bolts and I'll show you guys after with the glove box coming down once you take off the screws you'll be able to access this little flap so let me go ahead and take it out and then you can pull out your old cabin air filter which this one is absolutely disgusting and I'm so glad I didn't use the AC. Thankfully, we won't be reusing this. We're gonna go ahead and throw this away. When installing the brand new air filter, you wanna make sure that you see where the arrow is. So you want the arrow pointing down like this. So having the arrow pointing down, then you can go ahead and just put it back in like normal. So there you go, put it back into place. Make sure it's snug on there and that it's not bent. You don't want this bent. You want it to be able to take all the dirt instead of having that go into the car. Once you're done, you go ahead and put this back on, you put your glove box on, and that's it. We did all the fluids and we did the cabin filter, so I have the car running right now just to check the leaks under the car before I drop it. So I actually have the G37 in reverse, because that's the only way to get it to not be incredibly loud, uh, especially with the cold start. So I'm looking under the G37 to see for any leaks, and I don't see any leaks at all. So I'm happy to say that everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the G37. I'm gonna check the oil, I'm gonna check the transmission fluid, see if everything is good. Take it for a little test drive, see how it feels, and also get an alignment, maybe in this video, but I'm not entirely sure. All right guys, so it actually has been more than a week. It's actually been two weeks since I last filmed. So where we left off was the G37 went to get an alignment, and that was kind of it. So I wanted to drive the car some more, give you guys my final impressions on all the maintenance we did, which was quite a bit. And I will say this helped out the G37 a ton. If feels way better the tie rods were just completely shot so putting new ones in just made the car feel way way better not only that the shifting got a lot smoother and it feels way better I sometimes don't even notice it shifting which is a really good sign all in all I would say that this made the G37 feel a lot better and just giving me a peace of mind that the G37 has basic maintenance done to it so here's the kicker though I know a lot of you guys are gonna be kind of upset about what I'm about to say but I think I may be selling the G37. Don't get me wrong, I think this is a badass car. I think it's cool for what it is. But to be quite honest, I feel like I am neglecting the G35, which is essentially what I built the channel for. And uh, I kind of want to finish that one before I move on to another project. Realistically, I feel like I'm not going to finish the G35 anytime soon if I do have another project car for the channel. I hate to do this, but it's kind of the only choice I really have if I want to move forward with the G35. and really finish it all right guys so that's gonna be it for this g37 video like i said the g37 feels a lot better i don't have that sketchiness of the tie rods just snapping in half when i'm driving so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i hope you guys learned something and i'll see you guys in the next one peace